Hello and welcome back to everyone. I am back from my tour in the Bahamas teaching mobile development. Um, haven't really generated much content since so I've been back because I am actually working on a course based on the material that I taught over in the Bahamas and that's been taking a bunch of my time. But um, while I was busy working on my course, I got into React Hook Form because part of what I'm going to teach in my course is about React Hook Form. And I stumbled over a couple of things because as you, if you notice up here in the corner, they are now in version seven. And most of the work that I had done was on a previous version. So I said, let me just go through all the Ionic components, which I've done over here. I think I've got them all. If I'm missing any of them, let me know. And make sure I know how to use them with React Hook Form. And I have an example of how to use them that I could refer to. And then also an example that where I can set the default values and make sure the default values get set appropriately. Uh, most of it was pretty straightforward. I had a couple of gotchas. That's why, like I said, this will be a pretty short video. Uh, the stack blitz link for where the source code is will be available so you can kind of walk through it yourself. Um, and then as usual, ridiculously awesome documentation here on the React Hook Form site. So before I get into it, please make sure you like and subscribe. Uh, thank you everyone who's followed me over the last year or so, because I've really kind of seen my numbers go up since then. All right, let's get to it. So this is um, a React Hook Form application. Um, if you take a look at how I have this app set up here, let's see if I can get this side menu open. I am actually using the latest version, which is React Hook Form 7. And the main thing that you'll notice that I just hop around differently is kind of the way you register your components now with this kind of register command dot 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 kind of destructuring everything from register and shoving it into your component. What you'll see here is we'll start with the easy ones. Um, well, let's start with how we get this whole guy set up. So we are importing React Hook Form, and then you have this main hook, which is use form. The way you set your default values are you just use the key that's associated to your values and you set what you want the value to be. What's kind of cool is that once you do that, you get this cool kind of, um, for lack of a better word, uh, documentation letting you know what your values are. So anywhere, anytime you're anywhere in your app, so for example, if I hop down here to, where am I rendering some errors? So if I'm down here on errors, right, when I click, you can see it lists all the um, keys that are associated with your object. So I think that's, that was pretty awesome, pretty helpful to me. But um, let's start with the base. Um, well actually, let's just start at the top and work our way to the bottom. So we have this date picker, which everyone's very familiar with. You just drop it in. It allows you to pick your dates. If you notice, when I restart this thing, we get our default date set. And it was way easier than I thought it was. Um, you just kind of type in a date with this kind of year, month, day approach, and, and the date just kind of appears. But what's also interesting, if you just drop in 2011, it'll just go to January 1st, 2011, and then if you start putting in months, so if I just put a month in, it'll just jump to the month. So that, that was I thought that was pretty awesome. So let's kind of bump this to 2021. And so we can set the default date to that. So that was pretty cool. And then how did we set that guy up? So let's scroll down to our first one. We have our an item. We have our label. Then we have our date time. What I found for the date was that I did not have to use this uh, more advanced approach. Where do they call it? Uh, with controlled inputs. For the date, I did not have to use controlled inputs. I was able to just kind of set the values set the requirement required on it, which isn't really necessary since I'm setting a default date, and then I'm able to get my date value out. The next one that I've integrated, which I did have to use the controlled input, uh, was for Ionic, Ion Select, and there were some pretty interesting things that had to happen. And while using this, I found my new best friend, which is set value and get value. So what set value does, it allows you to take any key that is specified and set the value to it. What this um, controlled input does is you basically wrap your Ionic controller. So here, what I'm using is Ion Select, and I've wrapped it in a render method in this controller component that I get. And this controller co component has a render method. On that render method, you get access to the field, the field state, and the form state. I don't really have to do much with this other than I'm getting the value to kind of set the value on my um, options. 
And then what I'm doing is because Ion Select has this Ion Change event, with on the on change event, I'm using my favorite new function called set value to kind of set the value for what I want this entry to be in in this specific scenario. So for my controller, I want the gender to be whatever is the value that comes back from a select here. So that's uh, what's going on here. And then if you take a look, you can see that I'm also able to set to set my default value here. So I set my default value gender as female. And so then on the render, when the app first starts, let's re-render it. Female comes up. And let's just to show you that it's not because it's the first one, let's change this to male. And you can see our default is set to male. So that's our pick date and that's our gender. The email is just a plain text. If I scroll down to email, it's just a plain text, but you can see the complexity of how you can set the required field indicate that it's required and this this is actually the message that will be sent so I can say email is a required field and then when I try to submit it says email is a required field but this is just plain text so I can just put any email address in and it's working properly I'm getting an email value the main reason why this is working well is because uh, most of my values, if you look up here at the top, I've set default values for, so there's something in it to start off. The radio group turned out to be an interesting one. Of course, this is a controlled component. So if I come down here to my ion radio, Oh, actually, no, it was not a control. I thought, I, th I think I tried it as a controller, and then I realized I didn't have to. And so I did a couple of interesting things here. So what I'm doing here is I'm registering it as we normally do. I set required to true. But then to kind of set the initial value of it, I'm just doing a get values for whatever the radio group is currently set to. And then that will set the default value. And then I'm using the same trick I did with the ion change except I'm not doing it in a render method. When I get the ion change, I'm just calling the set value and taking the value that I get from the change event and assigning it to the top. Uh, you know, when I was looking at this, I was wondering if I could use the exact same approach up here on some of these other, uh, excuse me, on some of these other input items that I actually am using as controlled input. And I think that one of, the, one of the challenges I had was trying to get this value set properly. And that's why I went with this controlled input for the for the ion select. But I think I'm going to try to see if I can get all of these working without a controlled input. But for now, this does work. And so that's the radio group. And as you can see, I also am able to get the values for the radio group. And the other important thing, if you go up to the top, you can see I'm able to kind of set the default value. So like right now, it's set the biff, let's set it to griff. Let's save this and refresh. And so now Griff is set it to, as the default. Let's set it back to Biff, B-I-F-F. -F. And you can see now Biff is set as the default. So you're able to set the default value, then click through and change them, and then, of course, get the result back. How I really ended up getting into uh, up doing this updated video was I, I got twisted around with trying to work with checkbox and toggle. I had it working initially, so if we go down to, let's look at this ion checkbox. See, I'm using this controlled input here. And I had it working originally by doing the set value here in the on change event, but I just thought that it could, that just could not be the right way to do it. And so I spent hours trying to figure it out and eventually I logged an issue. And um, the base, the, uh, the React hook form, uh, support guy basically told me read the manual and um, it was kind of uh, a letdown because I this is where I started and hours later I ended up back there uh, what I had thought was that there was a way because what happens is off of this field event off of this field uh, property you get uh, a few more interesting things so if I destructure this I get it on change event from the field and I thought somehow I was supposed to integrate the on change to actually get the value. And so I was just trying everything in my power to make it work that way when in reality I did, it didn't matter. The other thing that I was trying to do was trying to, because if you know, for anyone who's worked with this before, 
you end up getting this this checked value, but you also get um, what is it? There's another value that comes back that's used that says on. And for some reason, it was always saying on. It's not what I wanted. Um, if you if I show my results here, basically what I wanted I wanted true and false to come back um, as the data that I wanted to save um, when I submitted this form. And so the way it ended up working was I just set the check based on the value. And when it's, when the I get an on change event here, I'm just getting the checked value and setting that to be the value for private check. And so that just kind of got everything all working. Like I said, I'm going to circle back around and see if there's a way I can make this all work without a con controlled input. What I'm doing with the check here, it actually is the exact same approach for the toggle. You can see I'm just listening for the ion change event. And then I'm setting the value using the set value. And then I'm setting the, um, the checked using the field value that I get returned. And then the ion range one, once again, was pretty straightforward to the exact same approach. We're getting the field and then we're using the value from the field. We can take this, this console log out. We're using the value from the field to set the value. And then we're using, I'm converting the detail value as a number because I want to save it as a number. If you notice on the submit, I'm getting an actual number back here, which is what I wanted, not a string. Um, and so that's how we handle the iron range. And the default is getting set because when it starts up, it's looking at this default value that I set and it's setting the value to that. If I go back to the top, you can see I have these default values set. So that's where it's getting the range. So if I adjust this from negative 150 to 150, you can see my range jumps up to 150. So I really just wanted to kind of walk you through this code. There's not a lot here. Um, you can look at the link for the stack blitz, play with the project yourself. Um, the important thing to note is that this way that you're setting it as default values here is how you could also use this exact same form to edit components. And what would happen is you would just pass the data in and then in the um, use effect on the first load of the component, you would just set the default values. So like I said, this is a pretty straightforward one. I'm going to end it there. Link will be included. Please let me know if there's anything else interested you want to see. Strongly, strongly encourage you to use React Hook Form. It's an awesome, awesome library. It'll make your life a lot easier. And um, everyone will think you're an awesome developer. So take care. I'll see you next time. Bye.